The goal of the Cutlery Cavern is to share information of the history of traditional pattern knives and also to review affordably priced knives available for both the collector and user alike. Without further ado, let's see what's up for today's episode. A slight departure from uh, traditional pattern knives and uh, collectibles. This is actually a user, the Old Hickory, now often called the Ontario 410-10 field knife. Um, this is what it looks like and we'll be doing a couple different uh, videos discussing it and uh, how these videos came about. And I'll have a slight introduction for each video as we do it. The first one will just be an overview of the uh, 410-10 and why I bought it. Okay, so what we have here is the Old Hickory 410-10 um, agricultural knife. It's a field knife and it's got a 10 inch blade. And the reason I picked it up is because I was looking for a small machete for like uh, camping or hiking and stuff. So you can cut up some little wood and I wanted something kind of light. It's only about a 16th inch blade. If you can see, there is actually some flux in this blade. It's a 1095 carbon steel. It's made by Ontario. Uh, it used to be Old Hickory, now it's uh, Ontario, I think. In any case, uh, when I first got this blade, um, I bought it online through eBay, and uh, the blade showed up rusty. And so I contacted the seller and said, Hey, this knife, it's all rusty. And uh, his comment back was, if you're looking for something for collecting, then this is not the kind of knife you want to get, which kind of upset me. And he goes, he said, it's a carbon steel blade. We keep these in our factory, uh, in a, in a factory warehouse and we sell them from there. Um, and so sometimes surface rust appears on it. And then he went on and said, if you have taken sand off the surface rust, what you're going to find is a nicely patinaed, uh, 1095 carbon steel blade. And it'll look good and it's going to work just fine. But if you really insist on sending it back, we can try and uh, send you uh, a nice shiny one that we can hand pick. I thought, well, is he just being rude or what? And then I thought, actually, he probably gets all sorts of people buying these uh, from, you know, collectors buying these and complaining because they got rust on them. So I can understand a bit of his attitude. And, uh, you know, and, but my concern was I thought the knife was used and so I took and um, took some uh, thousand grit sandpaper and sanded off the surface rust and lo and behold this is the way the blade looked and um, then I proceeded to do a couple of different tests and then I uh, did a, uh, a review of the knife online on Amazon and someone said that's such a thin blade I bet you it can't even cut uh, cut in the wood and it's like well I've already done that and then he said, and, and also said, I bet you couldn't even cut a, a milk jug with it. And that really irked me. So I went and made a video of me cutting a milk jug also. And I'll share both of those with you. The only real problem that I had with the knife when I got it was it doesn't come with a sheath. And so I said, well, that shouldn't be too hard. I can probably make a sheath out of something. And so this is the sheath I made. And this is uh, basically duct tape. Uh, wrapped around uh, some nylon cloth and then this was a a hardcover book that I cut up and covered in duct tape and then I basically put a wood doll here and a little spacer on this side so that the blade would fit through this hole if you can see I don't know if it'll make it through or not ah there you go and the sheath is completely empty uh, so I'm in completely hollow in the bottom has a hole in the bottom so water will run right through it see and so basically what I've got is a hardbound book cover for a book sheet uh, for a for a knife sheath but it works really well and I don't have to worry about you know trying to strap it down because it's really a long blade it's not going to fall out and nice big belt loop so it'll fit on a belt and when it falls apart I can always just fix it again with some duct tape. So that's uh, my sheath for my camp uh, machete. 
and I knew it was going to be good and I knew it was going to be able to cut well because they use these in, in the agricultural business for cutting down corn stalks and cutting up sugar beets and stuff. So I knew this blade was going to be a whole lot better than what the person online thought. So if you're ever looking for a really cheap, I mean $10 uh, camp machete with a 10 inch blade that you can also use the you know as a camp cleaver for cutting up meat and everything else uh consider the uh old hickory or ontario 410-10 um agricultural knife it's a really terrific blade okay before we go on to the uh milk jug test which i'll show right after this uh, i thought i would uh give you the uh specs on the uh blade and everything. As you can tell, the handle is held on by three very large uh, bird's eye brass rivets. And the overall length is supposedly 15.75 with an 11.9 inch blade instead of a 10 inch blade. In any case, that's just a little bit more corn that you can cut down at the same time. That's kind of like what these are used for. Uh, and you see here that the uh, hardness on the blade is uh, between 50 and 55, which explains a little bit of the flexibility and the fact that this is a machete. This is not like a combat knife or something like that. It's a very lightweight uh, thing. As you can see, 14.8 ounces. Uh, so very light in the hand. So uh, you're not going to go crazy uh, um, killing your hand working with this thing. And that was one of the reasons I was looking at this. Because, uh, you know, if you want something like an Essie Hunglis or something that's going to weigh quite a bit more and then it's going to be able to take down a tree then that's great but if you're just looking at something that that's going to cut through sawgrass and uh and deal with uh uh simple camp chores then this is a much better uh, tool for it uh, with that said let's move on to the next uh video which is the infamous milk jug test that i was mentioning here Well, that could have probably gone better for the milk jug, but as you can see, the uh, milk jug didn't stand a chance against this, and I knew that was going to be the case. Um, my only regret is, is I didn't fill it up with a bunch of uh, red jello because that would have made it look so much cooler. But uh, maybe next time when I do a milk jug test, I will make sure that I have it filled with red jello so when I slice through it, it'll really come out looking good. Uh, let's move on to the next test, which is going to be um, basically chopping into some wood with this thing. So what we have here is a 2x2 two two and uh, the 410 10 And what I'm going to do is whack it a couple times with this uh, 410, hopefully without cutting off a finger or something, to show you how deep it'll cut into the wood. And this is just basically a pine 2x2. Two As you can tell, no damage done to the blade at all. And so, you know, it can cut into two by twos with actually no problem. And like I said, this is just the old Hickory or the Ontario uh, 410-10. It's an agricultural knife. I probably should have moved the kitty cat to a different room when I started doing that because it did scare her a little bit, so. Uh, I'll remember next time not to have the kitty cats around when I decide to start hacking into wood with uh, any kind of big blade because uh, they do get nervous sometimes. Let's move on to the next phase, which was basically batoning with this uh, with the old hickory. We'll see how that goes. Well, yeah, sure, but can you baton with it? Why a person would baton with this, I don't know, but... What do you think? Can you or can't you? I think you can.
not the best batoning weapon, but I'm going with, yeah, you can baton with it too. But why would you do that when you could just bring a hatchet? Blade is still fine. No problems with the blade. Yeah, the uh, blade actually held up pretty good, but there was a little bit of rolling back here. And uh, considering I wasn't hitting anything in that area, I got a feeling the, the bit of rolling that had happened uh, had occurred earlier when I was doing something else with it. In any case, uh, a couple swipes on a... Um, on a whetstone and the, the little bit of rolling was gone which is typical with uh with these things if you put too sharp of an edge on these uh, you will get some rolling which is common anytime uh, too often people will try and like put a shaving sharp edge on something like this when you're realizing that you're actually going to be cutting down grass and stuff it, basically you're putting on the wrong edge for the tools at hand um, what a lot of people do with uh, machetes is actually leave this section of the blade somewhat dull and then uh, sharpen, uh, I'll give a really good sharp edge up here. For, this is where you put on your razor sharp edge near the first couple inches at the top so that if you need to do any kind of fine work, you can just choke up on the blade up here and then and do whatever you need to do. Some other people put a very sharp edge down here by the hand and do the same thing so that they can uh, have better control with the grip. But uh, the whole length does not have to be the same, which is a really cool thing about a machete. The center area can have a different edge than either of the ends, and you can get some really good work done with it. In any case, like I've mentioned many times, I'm, I'm really happy with this, and it, it works really good for a, a small bladed machete. And a lot of people um, can really use a small bladed machete, you know, something that's only 11 inches long and uh, easy to carry, really lightweight. It's a really good pack tool. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. As always, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining me again. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends. As always, comments and corrections are always welcome and insults are cheerfully ignored. Don't forget to ring that bell if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Come again soon.